Hello and welcome to another Steam Deck tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to set up Dock Station for Steam Deck, obviously, and that allows you to play PlayStation 1 games. If you are interested in other emulators for other consoles like PCSX2 for PS2, Ryu Dreams for Switch, feel free to check out my channel. I've got videos covering all that stuff as well. Just want to say this video is not condoning piracy. Make sure in you know for legal purposes that you have a PlayStation, that you own the game, etc. etc. All that stuff. Okay, so first things first, you wanna click on the Steam button and go to power and click switch to desktop. This is the first time you are using the desktop mode in the or on the Steam Deck or you know cover how to you know navigate it as well whilst we're doing this tutorial. I uh, should not usually do that, but it takes a few seconds to load. You can use the right trackpad to move the mouse. It doesn't work right now. It takes a few seconds to, there we go. It can take a few seconds for it to kick in. The other thing that you want to know is if you click this in, this is the same thing as a left click, like there. And if you use the left trackpad, this can get a bit confusing, and click it in. Same thing as the right mouse button. So left trackpad is like the right mouse button clicked in, left trackpad is like the clicked in, I mean the, sorry, the left trackpad is like the right mouse button clicked in, the right trackpad clicked in is like the left mouse button and that's the main thing that you'll want to know. Next thing is let's go ahead and download DockStation. You can do that by going to the Discover application which is the App Store. If it's not in the bottom it should be, you can just go to the Steam menu. Go to all applications and then just navigate and you'll find it there. So let's search for Duck Station. When you click on it, the search doesn't always appear for most of the time it does not appear for me. If you click on it with your finger, most of the time again still does not appear right now. To activate the keyboard, press the Steam button and the X button as well. So I'll zoom, go out a bit so you can actually see me doing that. There we go. And now we can literally just search for Duck Station. So, ooh, that was an F. Duck. Ooh. Yeah, this is another thing you'll notice. For some reason, it doesn't always type it in. My even delete letters. It is buggy. Uh, the This part of the interface is. So just bear that in mind when you are doing stuff. Okay, DU should be enough to hopefully find it. There we go, dock station right there. And if we click the install button, it's installing it now. It shouldn't take long, it is pretty darn small. And that's it. Okay, so we'll close the store down. The next thing you'll need is some ROMs, so some games. And I'm going to be testing Crash Bandicoot, which you know I legally, physically own as well. And I put that on my micro SD card. So this has been like a bin Q format or like ISO, that sort of stuff. And like I said, I'll show you where I've got it. You can put it wherever you want, but I recommend storing it somewhere so you can add the game directory easily, organizing it, got it on my micro SD card. ROMs, PS1, there we go, right there. Next thing is what you'll need is the BIOS file. So I've got the BIOS file right there and you can you know feel free to check out the Discord group for more information on acquiring this. There's channels literally set up for DuckStation and you know emulator links so you know feel free to check that out. And if I right click copy and what we'll need to do now is go to where we've installed DuckStation. To do that you go to home and you want to go to dot var. This is a hidden folder so to make that appear click the menu button here and go show hidden files and then you just go to dot var. Uh, if you just use your finger it just acts as like a double click effectively or an open and then you want to go to Duck Station has not appeared here yet. Let me just launch it up and then it should appear. 
should be on the games. There we go. There we go. The folder is now created. And if we go to the duck station folder now. And we go to config. Duck station. BIOS. We need to paste it right here. So right click with the left mouse button or the left trackpad button. Click paste one file. There we go. And that's all we need to do in terms of outside of here. Inside of duck station we can go to settings click general and feel free to have a look at any of these that you want to do uh, but we are interested in BIOS and it will automatically pick it up and we'll test it in a second to make sure and you can also mess around with like region feel free to you can change the emulation speed fast forward speed you can delete and create memory cards for the display. For the renderer, I'm going to leave you as OpenGL. We can try Vulkan as well if you want to try that because that does work good. Honestly, because it's a PlayStation 1 emulator, you'll, you'll have not very many performance issues. Therefore, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Something like a PlayStation 2 emulator uh, you know, is a lot more intense. doesn't matter. For the internal resolution scale, I recommend setting it to automatic based on window size. So X1 will be more of an original resolution scale, so it will look you know, a bit more pixelated. If you want that look, feel free to go for it. I've even tested it at a full max 16x. If you do automatic, it'll just do it the best for the window size. So, you know, it'll be pretty optimal for battery, but still, you know, give you high resolution as well. And apart from that, there's not probably nothing else that you really want to do mess around with as well. Again, if you know any of these settings and because you've used DuckStation before on PC, feel free to check them out. You can go to close and you want to go to add game directory and just add wherever you, your directory is. If it's somewhere on the Steam Deck, feel free to do that. If not, I'm going to go to primary. ROM, select the folder, don't go inside the folder, select and click open, and click yes. There we go, the game has now appeared, and what we can do, if you right click, you can do set cover image, and you can just select an image, I don't have anything for it right now, but you can do that as well, and you can edit the memory card, do fast full boot, full boot will show you know the PlayStation 1 intro, fast boot will just go directly into the game. To make sure the game, the BIOS is actually working, click start, start BIOS, make sure the volume is up. There we go. So I'm going to power off now, because we have confirmed that it is now working. And you could launch it from here, and then you can go full screen. You can do that, that is totally up to you. But what I recommend is actually shutting this down to make it easier to use. And just click on your Steam icon, go to library, Ooh, click on community. You wanna to go to library. You wanna to go to add a game, add a non-Steam, oh, keep doing the wrong one. Add a non Steam game and let's find it here. Duck Station, select it, click add selected programs. Boom, there we go. So now, actually, before we you know, exit from here, what we'll do, we'll just do a bit of configuration just whilst we're here and go into Duck Station. The one last thing we need to configure is the controls. So to do that, go to settings. And it doesn't really matter which one you do, go to where are the control settings again? Control uh, controllers and go to control port one. I recommend you go to auto you feel free to change the controller type so if you want like digital controller, analog controller, I'll leave you as analog controller, go to automatic mapping, go to SDL, Steam Virtual Keyboard, and there we go, it's automatically mapped. And if it doesn't, you just click on one, press what you want to do, 
and you don't need to do the same thing because it's automatically mapped it we're all good to go you can map you know controller port 2 as well onto like an external device like an xbox controller or a playstation controller and we can click close and we're all done now so we'll close this down now we can actually go back to gaming mode so if you just double click this this will go back to the regular steam mode from there we can launch duck station up and it's just a lot easier doing it that way now on instead of this method okay here we go and now click the steam button focus in so steam button go to library go to non steam in the top right and dock station appears right here click that click play and the right trackpad does not work here so you will have to use your you know your finger so you can use the desktop mode to use the trackpad because it's just easier that's the reason i prefer configuring in the desktop mode because you can use the trackpad just makes things a lot easier so if we just click on the game it should launch it now there we go it's got a higher resolution down there as you can see because it, we did it set it to automatic and if you was to go to review, I'm trying. Oh. What did I do? Oh, Steam Deck for some reason has just crashed on me. Let's restart it. Again, it's unlikely anything to do with Duck Station. I get issues like that with steam deck in general i think it's not 100 percent bug free yet so let's just launch it back up and so i was just looking for the full screen so the full screen mode is there if you do want to go onto it there we go it's launching up now so i've obviously done the full boot instead of fast boot So if you go to system, you can save state as well. So save state will all, you know, instead of an internal save, you'll save it directly where you are, anywhere at mid level on the menu, you can load state and go back to it. So that's an, a cool feature. That's one of the things I love about emulators. Now we can just go start game. Now we'll be on Insanity Beach. So as you can see, we have Crash Bandicoot working. And that's it. So it looks like if you want to go full screen, feel free to go to view. Oh, I've crashed it again. <laughs> I think it might be because I'm messing around with you whilst in game. It might be best if you do it from the start, you know, when the BIOS comes up. But that's it. Uh, uh, obviously, you you will get you know bugs and issues. Obviously, if you was to do it in desktop mode, you can use the trackpad. It makes things a lot easier. So feel free to use that version. If you have any questions, feel free to post a message in the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and, well, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Plus, actually, one thing to mention, there will be a Steam compatibility list that I'm compiling. There'll be a link in the description to that. Feel free to check that out, see what games, how they're running, especially on the more intense emulators like PlayStation 2, Switch, that sort of stuff. See you soon. Bye-bye.